Hertz disease, non-surgical treatment. Hertz disease which is also called idiopathic avascular necrosis of the femoral head is a rare childhood condition that affects the hip. It occurs when the blood supply to the rounded head of the femur, thigh bone, is temporarily disrupted. Without an adequate blood supply, the bone cells die, a process called avascular necrosis. The ball part of the femur can eventually collapse when the bone is weakened, if the blood supply is interrupted long enough. When the blood supply returns to the ball of the femur, the bone can improve its strength, but the shape of the femur can be permanently distorted. Most children with Perth's disease eventually recover. It is really a complex process of stages that can last several years. Perth's disease takes place in four phases. Phase 1, Necrosis Stage. In this stage of the disease, the blood supply to the femoral head is disrupted and bone cells die. The area becomes intensely inflamed and irritated and your child may begin to show signs of the disease, such as a limp or different way of walking. This phase can last from several months up to one year. Phase 2. Fragmentation Stage Over a period of one to two years, the body removes the dead bone beneath the articular cartilage and quickly replaces it with an initial, softer bone. It is during this phase that the bone is in a weaker state and the head of the femur is more likely to collapse into a flatter position. Phase 3. Reossification Stage New, stronger bone develops and begins to take shape in the head of the femur. The reossification stage is often the longest stage of the disease and can last from 1 to 3 years. Phase 4. Remodeling Stage in this stage, the bone regrowth is complete and the femoral head has reached its final shape. How close the shape is to round will depend on several factors, including the extent of damage that took place during the fragmentation phase, as well as the child's age at the onset of disease, which affects the potential for bone regrowth. Perth's disease usually affects children between the ages of 4 and 8 years, but the range can extend to between 2 and 12 years old. It is five times more common in boys than in girls. But when girls are affected, the condition tends to be more severe. For the majority of children with Perth's disease, only one hip is ever affected. Both hips are affected in up to 15% of children, but the both hips are usually not affected at the same time. If both hips are affected at the same stage of disease, that suggests multiple epiphyseal dysplasia MED. Causes and risk factors The cause of Perth's disease is unknown. It often affects children who are very active. It is associated with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder ADHD, in 33% of cases. There may be a genetic link to the development of Perth's. In fact, between 2 and 10% of children with Perth's disease have at least one family member with the disease. Exposure to secondhand smoke may also increase your child's risk of Perth's disease. Blood clotting disorders may contribute to the development of Perth's disease. Steroid use. Low birth weight. Abnormal birth presentation are also considered as risk factors. Symptoms Painless limp One of the earliest signs of Perth's is a change in the way your child walks and runs. Your child may limp, have limited motion, or develop a peculiar running style. You, as the parent, may be the first to see them while watching your child play. Some children don't feel much or any pain at all, but others may feel an intermittent pain in the hip or groin, or in other parts of the leg such as the thigh or knee that gets worse during activity and improves with rest. Pain occurs without an injury associated. Stiffness or decreased motion in the hip joint especially internal rotation and abduction. Shortening of the affected leg, leading to uneven leg length. It is a late finding. 
Diagnosis To get a better understanding of the situation, your doctor will ask you when you first notice the symptoms, what makes the symptoms worse, what makes them better, if there are any other health issues. Your doctor will also conduct a thorough physical examination, which will involve moving your child's legs through their range of movement. He will assess your child's range of motion in the hip. Hertz typically limits the ability to move the leg away from the body, abduction, and twist the leg toward the inside of the body, internal rotation. One specific test that your doctor will look for is a so-called Trendelenburg sign. When standing on the affected leg, an abnormal tilting of the pelvis is indicative of weakness in the abductor muscles of the hip. This Trendelenburg sign is often seen in children with Perth's disease. If Perth's disease is suspected, the provider will obtain X-rays of your child's hips. Initial X-rays might look normal because it can take one to two months after symptoms begin for the changes associated with Perth's disease to become evident on X-rays. Your doctor will likely recommend several X-rays over time to track the progression of the disease. Early findings on plane radiographs. Widening of joint space. Caffey's sign or crescent sign which is a subchondral radiolucent fracture line parallel to articular surface of femoral head. This sign may be visible prior to fragmentation stage. Later findings. Fragmentation of femoral ossification center. Lateral subluxation and flattening of femoral head. MRIs often can visualize bone damage caused by Perth's disease more clearly than X-rays but are not always necessary. Bone scan may be part of evaluation if diagnosis is in question. It reveals decreased perfusion to femoral head. Treatment About 60% of children with Perth's disease recover without any treatment, especially very young children, those 2 to 6 years old. It is important, however, for all children to be carefully followed up by their doctor during the course of the disease. They usually have to attend clinic every three to four months for examination and x-rays. In that way, children that are at risk of doing less well are identified and treated accordingly. The doctor will recommend a treatment based on the degree of your child's hip pain, stiffness, how much of the head of the thigh bone has collapsed in the age when symptoms began. The aim of treatment are, resolution of symptoms, restoration of range of motion and containment of hip to protect the shape of the femoral head. Painful symptoms are caused by inflammation of the hip joint. Anti-inflammatory medicines NSAIDs, are used to reduce inflammation and pain. Your doctor may recommend them for several months. As your child progresses through the disease stages, your doctor will adjust the dosage or discontinue the medication. Avoiding high-impact activities, such as running and jumping, will help relieve pain and protect the femoral head. On occasion, your doctor may also recommend crutches or a walker to prevent your child from putting too much weight on the joint. Physical therapy exercises are recommended to help restore hip joint range of motion. These exercises often focus on hip abduction and internal rotation. Parents or other caregivers are often needed to help the child complete the exercises. If range of motion becomes limited or if X-rays or other image scans indicate that a deformity is developing, a cast or brace may be used to keep the head of the femur in its normal position within the acetabulum. Petri casts are two long leg casts with a bar that hold the legs spread apart in a position similar to the letter A. The doctor will most likely apply the initial Petri cast in an operating room. During the application, your doctor will take a series of special X-ray images called arthrograms to see the degree of deformity of the femoral head and to make sure he or she positions the head accurately. In an arthrogram, a small amount of dye is injected into the hip joint. 
In some cases, the adductor longus muscle in the groin is very tight and prevents the hip from rotating into the proper position. Your doctor will perform a minor procedure to release this tightness, called a tenotomy, before applying the Petri casts. During this quick procedure, the surgeon makes a tiny incision in the groin and severs a tendon in the hip called the adductor. The tendon grows back within a few months, allowing your child to move his or her hip more normally. After the cast is removed, usually after four to six weeks, physical therapy exercises are resumed to restore motion in the hips and knees. Your doctor may recommend continued intermittent casting until the hip enters the final stage of the healing process. Surgery is most often recommended when your child is older than age 8 at the time of diagnosis because the potential for deformity during the reossification stage is greater in older children. When more than 50% of the femoral head is damaged, keeping the femoral head within the rounded acetabulum may help the bone grow into a functional shape. When non-surgical treatment has not kept the hip in correct position for healing, I will explain the different types of surgeries in next video.